Alright guys, so as you may know, iOS 12.1 was released not too long ago. It's the first semi-major update since iOS 12, so it's got a reasonable number of new features that were announced a long time ago but weren't implemented yet, and some other minor bug fixes and stuff that we can also talk about. Not anything huge really, but still worth mentioning, so hopefully this shouldn't be too long of a video. Starting off, definitely one of the more significant features is the dual SIM slash eSIM capability which was now activated and it allows you to basically have two phone numbers on one iPhone. Now this does require that your carrier supports it and I'm sure a lot of the major telecom companies are all going to support it eventually but they might not right away. Now this basically allows you to have a few different options. You can have one for example maybe as data only or you can have one for voice and text and it'll act like a normal phone number but one major caveat is that a second phone number cannot have iMessage as well so only one of the phone numbers can use iMessage. I don't know if they're gonna change that, but that is something you need to be aware of, and I think it's kinda of dumb. As you can probably guess, this is only available on phones with the new hardware, so that's gonna be the XR, the XS, and the XS Max. If you have even the X or earlier, you're not gonna be able to get the dual SIM, it just doesn't have that capability. And even if you don't have an eSIM activated in your phone right now, you can actually still go into the settings, and it'll show you the IMEI of that eSIM, so you can at least look at that right now if you're just curious. Next up, this one I think a lot of people are gonna like, and that is group FaceTime. We kinda knew this was coming. It allows up to like 30-something people in one group chat, and basically you can enable it or start a group FaceTime call right from a messages group conversation, so pretty simple. And like previously, it's end-to-end -end encrypted, so it's not gonna be snooped on by your ISP or anything like that. All right, now next up, you might like this one, and that is that Apple added 70 plus new emojis. You might be thinking, well, why would they bother adding all these emojis? Well, it actually is to keep up with the Unicode 11 standard. So Unicode is actually, I think, like an independent organization that comes up with all these emojis, and then they become the standard, and then phone manufacturers and software designers have to basically uh, support that standard. So Apple isn't designing the concept behind these emojis, they are just creating the actual art for them. So a couple of these examples are different colored hair for people, some with bald people. You have one like a frozen guy, you have one that's with like a party hat, you have a super sad guy that really reminds me of that sad cat meme, and a bunch of also random objects and stuff like that. So Apple didn't decide which of these emojis to add again, they just created the art for them, and new Android software, for example, will probably support these as well going forward. Though keep in mind, because Android phones usually update a lot slower, if you're using these emojis and you're sending it to someone who uses Android or an older version of iOS, they might not be able to see these emojis at all. Okay, moving on, we now have a new camera feature, and this is only for the newer phones like the XS and the XS Max as well. And this basically allows you to adjust the blurriness or the bokeh background level of portrait photos in live real time, not just after you take the photo. So before you were able to take the photo and adjust the blurriness afterwards, now you can do it afterwards or during the photo itself. So that's just kind of cool to get an idea of what it's gonna look like. Before we get to the bug fixes, I will mention one hidden feature that some people discovered but it's not mentioned in the change log. And that is if you touch on the flashlight icon from the lock screen, you kind of have to 3D touch on it, but it now makes a clicky sound. It has some haptic feedback. So it sounds like you're actually switching on or off a flashlight, and it is pretty satisfying if you turn up the volume for it. All right, so on to some significant bug fixes. First of all, Apple fixed that issue where it had weird skin smoothing on selfie pictures. Basically what was happening was with Apple's technology for taking photos, it would kind of take several photos and blend them together to get like better lighting and stuff. And apparently it was using the wrong base photo as like the main photo that was like a longer exposure, so it was a little bit more blurry, and that had the effect of making your skin a lot looking smoother. So now it's gonna be using a lot sharper, shorter 
uh, shutter speed image, so the overall photo should look a lot sharper, and it's not gonna have that weird smoothing effect anymore. Also, there was that other bug that was pretty big, it got a lot of press, where certain phones, either the XS or the XS Max, randomly would not charge if you had the phone locked for some reason. Uh, I think Unbox Therapy did a test on this and it, there was actually like a significant number of phones that were doing this and apparently they fixed that in this 12.1 update. Apple also apparently improved cellular connectivity in XS's and XS Max's. So if you had bad cell reception before, I guess hopefully it should be better now. And finally, Apple also says they fixed an issue where certain voicemails would not show up in the phone app and this is something I've experienced for like a really long time, like multiple years. So hopefully this is the same bug that they're talking about that they fixed here, where it literally just would not show any voicemails coming through and I had to manually check them. I really hope they fix that once and for all. Now those are all the significant features that I thought were worth mentioning. There were some other really minor bug fixes that probably aren't really even worth bothering to talk about, but if you wanna see a full list, you can see the full change log here and get an idea of those if you wanna read through them real quick. So if you haven't already, be sure to update to iOS 12.1. If you guys want to, be sure to check out some of my other videos on here. I think you'll enjoy them. And until next time, be seeing you.